are making an eight pocket folder from one A4 sheet of paper following a fabulous tutorial by Natasha from her channel Treasure Books. Welcome, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. For the few of you who have not seen Natasha's tutorial last December, here's a peek at what her booklets look like in her style. Now, while Natasha uses a 12 by 12 scrapbook sheet to make a six pocket folder, I'm going to adapt her instructions a little bit and I'm going to use an A4 sheet of paper adding two more pockets. But I still highly recommend for you to watch Natasha's video as well because she is such an amazing teacher with very clear instructions and her booklets are so fun as well. And she shows you many different ways to decorate these. And of course, I will link her video down below in the description box for you. So I wanted my version to be smaller and thinner so it would be easy to add it to a journal, any journal, including a traveler's notebook size journal like this, for example, which we made recently using beautiful floral images from the Digital Collage Club. And I will link the video for this below as well for you to see. And yeah, so my thought was to use another one of my avocado dyed papers. And in the first part of the video that I'm linking here in the part one for this video, I also show you my avocado dyeing process in case you're interested. So this is one of the papers that I've dyed and this is what I'll be using to make my eight pocket folder. As per Natasha's instructions, we need to start off by having a square. So you can also use your American legal size if you want. You don't have to use an A4 paper. You can do it with any size of paper which you can make a square out of. So in order to do this, the easiest way is to just fold your paper up to, to the edge to form a triangle and then you fold it down crease it well and then all we have to do is cut off this extra part here and we will have a perfect square so once you have this cut off you do not throw this away we will be using part of this later on so now we have our perfect square so then we fold it again up into this triangle and now we're going to fold the two outer edges or outer corners inside and I measured for, for an A4 paper it should be three and three fourths that you fold it in. So we're going to mark three and three fourths from both sides. So three and three fourths and same thing on the other side from the outside in three and three fourths make a little mark with your pencil so you know that's where you have to fold now if you're using a legal sheet and and um, your measurements are different what you just need to make happen is when you fold in your two corners they should not be overlapping so they should almost be like almost like a third a third a third a third so what you want is to just when you fold these in and then you fold in the other one you want them to be able to overlap but they don't have to go all the way to the edge of the other one so what i mean is now you have this and you see this one goes almost to the end and this one here goes actually this goes all the way to the end so i didn't do it as precisely as i would have wanted to but that's going to be fine yeah as long as your triangles don't go over 
this line and over this line, you'll be fine, okay? So this is what we have now. Next, you're going to open this up again, unfold it, and then we're folding along the score lines that we just made. We fold it in like this and like this. So this is the shape you have now. And then we turn it around. And if my instructions, instructions aren't clear, please go see Natasha's video because they probably are more clear than mine. So now we have this shape. And so we have this on the other side and we need to fold these triangles back. So I'm just gonna fold them like this. Very easy. So we have one. Do the same thing with the other one. Okay, and now all we have to do is so we have this now. We fold this in half where the crease here is. We just fold it in half. Like that. And that already is the basic construction of our booklet. So we have these two flaps. And on the outside, so we have one and one. Okay? So that's the base. That's all it is. So currently we have six pockets if we were to glue everything down as it is so we'd have one here then we have two three four five and six and since we have a thinner version where we don't have to worry so much about the bulk as if we were doing it with a thicker scrapbook paper, we can now afford to make the two more pockets I was talking about. So you take your scrap piece that we had cut off before, and as we did in the beginning with the A4 sheet, we're just going to fold up one corner up to the edge to form another square. And then we take the other corner and we fold it up onto this line here. That was not straight. Try to have it straight. <laughs> that would help. So now you have this weird shape. On the other side it's a triangle with this left over and this bit here we're going to get rid of and I'm simply going to cut that with my scissors you can tear it with your ruler so I'm just gonna cut this off and this is what will be left of the A4 sheet we don't actually need this so we have this now this triangle and we're going to make a crease in the middle. So we're going to just fold it up on itself to form a smaller triangle. Make sure that it's even. Okay, so now we have this. And then, because it's still going to be a bit too large, I want it to be like this, to have like a double tuck spot here. So what I want to do is I'm going to, it, it depends how large you want to have it. You could have small and then it would be, you could cut it here or I'm going to make it a little bigger. I'm going to put it about here. I don't know how well you can see this. So it looks like this. Yeah. And so I am now just going to Make sure that it's in the center here with my other crease lined up. And I'm going to draw the line where I want to cut it. And I just draw a line here and this is where I'm going to now cut this. And now 
we have our eight pockets this way. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be inking up all the edges and then you'll actually see the construction better. But we're not gluing down yet, not yet. This is what it looks like once everything is inked up, so I think you can see it a little better now. So this is going to be our booklet. And before we glue anything down, what I wanna do is I want to line these pockets here, for example. I wanna put something like a decorative paper inside, so we do that before we glue. And maybe also on the front and back, we'll see. And since I want to make it match to this particular journal, I still have some offcuts of some of the papers I was using from the Digital Collage Club. And I will link these down for you below, again, in case you're, you're interested in these. And I'm gonna try to see if I can make that work for my lining of these pockets. So you use whatever you want to use or you don't or you have or you're already using a decorative paper and you don't need to line the inside but if you do just use a digital that you enjoy or any other kind of paper that you like that will match whatever project you want to use it for or if you're just gonna use this as a very cute happy mail folder then of course you do whatever you want you don't have to match it to anything but in my case i want to match it so I think I can make it work to have this here on the inside of the pocket. So that means I need to cut it off roughly here before the end of the pocket. I will actually just tear this to make my life easier. So I want it peeking out. So I will tear it like this. And so this here will go inside here and it will just peek out from the pocket like this. And same thing on the other side, I have this piece left and I think I can make it if I turn it this way. That means I need to maybe I'll just mark this. It doesn't have to go all the way until the end. You won't see that. Well, ideally it should be the same height as the other one, just so that it matches. So I will tear it here. And that way I can put this in here. Because I think that looks cute if that peeks out like this. So I'm going to ink up the edges that are gonna be visible and then we'll glue these inside our pockets. All right, so I've inked up the edges. So now we can fold this out again and then we just need to glue these two on. And I'm gonna do this with my glue stick because that way I know it's not going to warp because if I use my tacky glue, it's going to warp and it's going to annoy me. <laughs> and by the way, I'd like to just tell you one thing. Next week, I, I need to take a little bit break from my videos. So unfortunately, I won't have any videos next week because I need to go to some extremely boring bookkeeping workshops for my upcoming business adventure. So unfortunately, I won't have time to make two videos. So I apologize for that, but I'll be back the week after. So don't, don't forget me in the meantime, please. <laughs>
which is not great. But we'll see if we can make it work. I don't want to waste it. So I am going to try to place it. Yeah, I'm going to try this. So now what I do is I'm going to take my tearing ruler and I will... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear, you see the line of the triangle is here, so I'm putting it a little, a little farther down and I'm going to tear basically along this line. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then the same thing, I'm going to turn it to make it easier. I will tear along the bottom. I don't know if this is going to look good. I'm just going to try it. Okay, so I have this now. I will fold it in the middle. And ink it up and then we'll see what that actually looks like. I might not want to use this. <laughs> Once it's inked up, and please, if you, if you ink your, your pieces up, don't forget to ink this crease in the middle so that you have a continuous line going down. So if we put that here, this is what it would look like. And I guess it's okay. It's not what I would have chosen, but I, th I think it's fine. So we can go ahead and glue that onto our little triangle. Okay, we're not gluing anything else yet. We're going to turn this around and now we need to worry about the front and the back. Obviously, I could leave it as is because to be honest, I think these splatters are great. But just to make it match with my other, with my TN, I wanna see if I can fit an image here. So I still have this printout and I also have this one. And I think this one might work well for the front. This one here has a rounded corner. I wanted to use that for something else. So either I, I don't wanna have the rounded corner. So I will try to cut this in a way that will work. And ink it up and then I'll be back. So we can then go ahead and put this one down. So I'm going to center this. I didn't want the image, even if I would have had a bigger one, to cover the whole thing in my case because I do, of course, want a little bit of my beautiful avocado dyed paper showing through. So that's what that's going to look like. And we're not gluing this down yet. And now I just want something else for the back here. And I still have this one here. So I think this would also fit well here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it the same size as the other one. And then cut it and ink it up and then we can glue that here. Okay, so we have these two images. So this is the back, this is the front. This is the inside so far. Now, of course, you can continue decorating as much as you want. You could put something here. You could add something here. But in my case, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do something different. So I want to use my, my wild honey. <laughs> so I'm going to... I'm going to make some splatters. I want to make one up here. Like that. And I'm going to make one down here. And I'm also going to make one up here. Perfect. I just love these. So 
yeah if you haven't seen my past videos these unfortunately have been discontinued maybe you can find them somewhere apparently the mixture in the distress stain spray bottles is the same so you could use that but you'd still need the dabber so if you have old dabber bottles you could keep them and refill them with the spray i don't particularly like sprays but this dabber is just fabulous as you can see i mean how fun are those splatters so if you don't have anything like this and you want splatters I've mentioned this in another video. You can also, of course, use watercolor and a brush and you tap the brush and you will get smaller spots, of course, but it'll, it'll also give some beautiful interest to your little folder. And I also wanna do this for the front and the back. And we'll also be adding something here as well. So I think I want one up here and I want one here. Now I, I said I wanted to add something here and here. So I still have these left from, from the other TN project. I will link these below as well. These are some beautiful circle images, but you don't have to use a circle, use anything. Any embellishment you have would look really cute here. You could even layer some that would look really cute. So I need to choose some, maybe I will try this one. And my, I have this one and a half inch circle punch, which it's smaller than the image, but it's okay. I don't have one that fits exactly. You can also hand cut around the circles, obviously. So I could like, put that here. I will ink that, of course. <laughs> And I want one for the back. I think for the back, I will choose this one with the butterfly. And since obviously these are very white and don't really fit here, I'm going to use my tea dye Distress Oxide to kind of make that work a little better. So I'm gently rubbing it in, in circle motions just to get rid of that stark white. And then we'll go around the edges with the vintage photo. So, and now let's see. Yes, I think that works a lot better now. So now before we start gluing things, there's one more optional step, but you will understand why I have to do this. Because I also have done it here. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? It's the gold edging or the copper edging. So again, Here's my beautiful gilding wax. It's from Le Franc and Bourgeoise. It's a French one. I bought this locally. I will link a similar one from Prima Marketing down below in the description box for you. It is this wonderful, wonderful copper wax, which gets soft when you add the warmth of your fingers. And I'm going to edge everything and that also includes these round ones. So I'm just gently going over the edge with my finger to give it this absolutely gorgeous copper, rose gold actually, it looks like a rose gold edge. So there you see, or do you? Yeah. So I will be doing that for all of the parts and then we can start the gluing process. Or maybe there's one more thing I wanna do. <laughs> so I will edge these now. OK, 
Okay, we have everything edged now with the copper and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And one thing I wanted to do, one thing I discovered last night and I think it's so cool, is that you can also use this wax through your stencils, yes. So what I wanna do is I wanna put some stenciling here where there's some empty space. And I have this wonderful stencil from Tim Holtz. If I find it, I will link it for you below. It's the one that says lost and found and some numbers. And I want to add the number 13 right there. So one, one thing you need to know is you will not be able, as far as I know, get the wax off your stencil. So I tried washing this yesterday and it didn't come off anymore. So if that bothers you, then don't do this, but I don't care. It doesn't hurt the stencil in any way. And I see my stencils as tools, so I'm not very fussy with them. So all you do is you hold it there and then you just add it with your fingers because that's the only way it's gonna be soft. And you just gently rub through your stencil and it's so cool. Because once this is dry, it dries completely and it, it's, it won't move anymore. It won't smudge or anything. So, ta-da! Isn't that beautiful? I love this. So that's going to go right there. Oh, it's so cool. I love it so much. And, well, we could, while we have it out, we could also maybe try to put, we could put a number here. Let's try that, that should be fun. Actually, we should be putting the number here to balance it out because we have one here. So we want one on the opposite side. So I'll put it over my splash a little bit. Ta-da! Oh my God, I love it, I love it! Ah, these things make me so happy. <laughs> so once you're finished decorating everything you want to decorate, we can start gluing everything together. So first we have this triangle. So I'm first going to glue these bits down. Now you might be thinking, why do we need those bits? We could just cut them off. Yes, that is one option. But I do like having a folded edge here because I think it's more sturdy as a pocket rather than having it cut off here. So the first step is to just glue these two triangles down. And once we have that, on the back side now we're going to put a narrow strip of glue along the center line where the two triangles meet up and along the bottom here. And then we turn it around and we glue it right in the middle making sure that the center lines line up and the bottom lines up. All right, so those are our first two pockets. So we have one here and we have one here. Next, we fold the bottom big triangle down and the upper one up. And we're going to put glue along this middle line of the triangle, just along the triangle, right down the middle. And then we fold that up. Now we fold the bottom by triangle back up and we make marks where these two triangles meet up and we make the marks on the bottom triangle. So I'll just make a little mark with my pencil here and here. And then we fold this down again and we put glue right where our marks are from there down 
And then also along this line. So from the mark down on our triangle, just a little bit of glue. We don't want it squishing out everywhere. And then along this crease of the big triangle on the bottom. So if we did it right, we are now going to have a small pocket here and a small pocket here and a large pocket here and a large pocket there. Now moving on to the outside, we wanted to add these. So I want to put one like this. So I will add some glue just on the one side. Like this. And then to close up this pocket, I'm going to put glue here on the bottom edge. And then I'm also going to glue this part here. Basically, just to continue this line, everything below that. So now we have a little pocket here. And we do the exact same thing on the back side. So I want it like this. So I will just put glue here on the inside. Add glue here on the bottom edge. Continue the line and glue everything below that. And we have our little pocket here. So then you could add this little pocket thing in your journal so if you have something like this then either you could add it instead of the postcard I put here you could add it in front like this or on the back side it would also be cute or you could put it in one of the pockets or if you would have thought ahead could put it in the middle of the signature, which would also be really cute. So instead of a centerpiece like I have here, you could put, of course, your little booklet and have that in the middle. That would be really cute as well. So lots of options to work with this. So as this video is already more than half an hour long, I will stop it here. If you want me to show you how I would decorate some ephemera to put in these pockets, please let me know in the comments below, then I will gladly do that with you. Otherwise, I'll do something else for the next video. So as a reminder, I will be skipping two videos next week, but I will be back the week after. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this gave you some more inspiration. Check out Natasha's video and hope to see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.